people normally quote the valid ideas they forget that they even left behind invalid ideas they were great thinkers the difference between these philosophers who predicted and the quran is these philosophers only thought and predicted and they made even false statements the quran alhamdulillah more than 1000 verses speak about science and not a single is wrong the difference is quran gives a challenge to say that Prophet Muhammad copied from these people and didn't copy the negative point, maybe one or two it's possible, it was fluke. But to say that all the thousands of verses the Quran speaks about science were copied is illogical because Quran gives a challenge. Afalla is the Brunal Quran. Walaqana men in the Gairilla. Lavajudu fiktilaf and kasira. In Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 82. Do you not consider the Quran with K? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. The next question from my brother on the right. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> my name is Faisal. How scientifically or logically can you explain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being omniscient, that is knowing the past, present, future and everything, sent scriptures before the Quran? Why didn't he send the Quran itself? Brother has a question that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send Quran earlier why did he send the other revelations first and then the Quran it's like you asking me that why didn't you first teach me medicine why I had to go to standard 1, standard 2, standard 3 and then do my medicine you have to go in stage wise all the previous revelations that came before the Quran as I mentioned earlier were sent only for those people and for a particular time period the holy Quran is sent for the whole of humankind and its message is meant till eternity therefore the previous revelation they are not been preserved Allah thought it right he has divine knowledge he knows when to send the final revelation not that he could not send earlier like the teacher knows how much to teach to a student should not go beyond the level so Allah thought it fit that the humankind maybe had reached that level where I can reveal the final revelation Allah knew that maybe previously it, the time was not right therefore all the previous revelations none of them have been preserved except the Holy Quran because Quran is the last and final revelation and it will prove itself to be the word of God it proved itself 14 years ago will prove today and will be able to prove till eternity inshallah the next question from the slip the Quran says that Allah has made the earth for you as a carpet this gives an indication that earth is flat which is contradictory with modern science the question posed was and people are astonished out here that the Quran says the earth was like a carpet spread out like a carpet so does not mean it was flat what the person is referring to is an ayat in the holy Quran in Surah Nuh, chapter number 71, verse number 19 and 20, which does say that we have spread out the earth like a carpet. But it gives the answer in the next verse, in verse number 20, so that you may walk and travel in the spacious path. As I mentioned in my talk, the geology that tell us today, the earth which we live on the surface is hardly 1 to 10 miles and less than 1% of the total radius of the earth, which is 3750 miles. The top layer is a solid shell. The deeper layers are hot and fluid and inhospitable for existence of life. Nowhere does the Quran say that the earth is flat. It gives a similitude that we have spread out the earth like a carpet. People normally have a misconception that a carpet can only be spread on a flat surface. It's wrong. A carpet can also be spread on a spherical surface. For example, imagine that there is a big model of the earth, the globe, say about 10 feet in radius, very big. Very well, you can spread a carpet around it, it's possible. But Quran is scientifically also speaking that besides spreading out, today science tells us that the earth's crust, because when we lay out a carpet, we normally spread out a carpet on the surface which is not comfortable to walk on. Carpet is normally spread out on a surface which is not comfortable to walk on. 
So science today tells us that if the outer crust was not spread out like a carpet around the spherical earth, we would not be able to live. Because the deeper layers are hot and fluid. So when Quran says they have spread out the earth, it is referring to the earth's crust has been spread out like a carpet. And the reason is given so that you may walk in the spacious path of the Lord. Quran says in other places also that we have made the earth as spacious. Quran says this in Naba, chapter 78, verse number 6, we have made the earth as an expanse. It is referring that the earth we have made as wide. You know why? The answer is given in Surah Kabut, chapter 29. Verse 56, which says, We have made the earth as a wide expanse for you, so that you will worship me and me alone. So tomorrow you cannot say that the situation where I lived in, maybe Bombay, it was a difficult circumstances. Therefore, I was prevented to do good deeds, and I did evil deeds. Allah says the earth is a wide expanse for you. It is spacious. You cannot give the excuse for doing evil deeds because of your circumstances. Therefore, worship Allah and Allah alone. There is no place in the Holy Quran which says the world is flat. In fact, I told in my speech, the Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse 29, and Surah Al-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 5, that the world is spherical. And specifically, in Surah Nazia, chapter 79, verse number 30, wal ard ba'da zalika dahaha. We have made the earth thereafter egg-shaped, like an ostrich egg, which is exactly geospherical. Hope that answers the question. Next brother on my left. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdul Subhan. I am an accountant. It is mentioned in the Quran that Allah Taala says, No one can say what is in the stomach of mother, male or female. But uh, on the other hand, science says or is proving that uh, male or female. So kindly give your bright light on this question. The brother posed the question that the Quran says that no one besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can mention what is the sex of the child in the mother's womb. And today science is advanced. We can come to know by ultrasonography, etc., the sex of the child. What the brother is referring to a verse in the Holy Quran from Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 34, which says, only Allah has the knowledge of the hour of when it's going to rain, what is in the womb of the mother, where will a person die and what will he earn. The Quran says only Allah knows what is in the womb of the mother. It does not say what is the sex of the child in the mother's womb. I do know there are various translations, especially the Urdu translations. They mention the word sex. The word sex is not there in the Holy Quran. The Arabic verse of Surah Luqman chapter 31 verse 34 does not say sex. It says no one besides Allah knows what is in the womb. It's only referring to the nature of the child. Whether the child that will be born, will he be good or will he be bad? Will he be boon for society? Will he be bane for society? What will he become? A doctor or an engineer? Will he go to heaven or hell? And no scientist with the best technology can decipher that. Nowhere does the Quran say that only Allah knows the sex. It is saying only Allah knows what will be the nature of the child and what will he do. And no scientist with whatever equipment they have can predict this. The next question from the slip. What does the Quran speak about the possibility of life on other planets or moon as the scientists are claiming possibility of water on the surface of moon? I think we have covered this in the earlier part of the question answer session. The next uh, question I would put forward, which has come on the slip. We have talked about astronomy. What is the reference towards astrology and effect of the position of stars and planets on human life? The Hindu mythology and belief lays a lot of stress on Janpatri and palmistry. Your comments, please. Question posed is, the Quran speaks about astronomy. What does the Quran speak about astrology? Like looking at the stars and Janpatri, fortune telling, etc. The Quran says in several places, including Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, it says, Ya ayyuhal amunu, O you who believe, most certainly intoxicants and gambling. Dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich for min amali shaitan. These are certain handiwork. Abstain from such handiwork that you may prosper. The Quran says that do not indulge in fortune telling. It doesn't say whether fortune telling can be right or wrong. It says don't indulge in it. 
and we know there are many people who can look at the palm and predict your future by looking at the stars and we know most of it is fake. 